Hi everyone, this will be a very quick video to show you the uh, sensitivity of the frequency that needs to be tuned for this effect to happen. So right now the uh, battery was connected and now disconnected and it's been running for a little bit of time and if we look at the voltage, the voltage across that battery is usually 1.28 volts. So now as you see the voltage is climbing so the uh, circuit is in operation, everything is connected, so energy is somehow going back and charging the capacitor bank. Now those capacitors at the back there are two capacitors in parallel, and each one is 3,900 microfarads. So there's a quite large capacitor bank there, uh, so that's why the voltage isn't climbing uh, too quickly. But it is climbing nev nevertheless. Now, if we look at our data here, there is the uh, pulse happening and there's our current across the 1 ohm resistor. This is our data. We're at 19 kHz at this time, 22% duty cycle. Now, what I'll do is I'll reduce the duty cycle, which is this potentiometer here, and you'll see that by reducing that just a little bit, the uh, charging effect will actually stop. <clears throat> so now as you see it's actually stopped. It's not continuing and it's actually maybe indicating that it's going the opposite way. And if we look at what the duty cycle now is, is 16 percent. So dropping it lower at one point it, the effect stops as well. So that was only a small change in duty cycle and what I'll do now is I won't change the frequency here because this pod is very very sensitive it takes a while to tune it what I'll do instead to change the frequency is insert a capacitor in parallel with the uh, capacitor that's there to change the frequency so as you see now the uh, charge is going back because it's in more uh, in its ideal condition we're still at uh, 19 uh, K Hertz 22% uh, duty cycle and I'll insert that capacitor right now I'm trying to do that here with one hand okay so the capacitor is in and you now see quickly that now it is using current because the voltage is dropping very quickly across the capacitor and if you look the frequency now is only three uh, thousand Hertz uh, less so we're at 16 K Hertz instead of 19 K Hertz and that's uh, just showing you that what happens when we just change the frequency just a little bit it takes a very small amount even less than what I've just done there I pull that back out and now we see a recovery so frequency is very uh, sensitive and an important uh, point uh, here and duty cycle to get this uh, reverse kind of energy happening uh, and all this time the battery has been disconnected so it's only energy you know coming back this you know back and forth now the other thing is that is that this is not about just this coil this effect is about the magnet. This cannot happen with any of the frequencies. I Believe me, I've sweeped all the frequencies and this does not happen if there's not a magnet happening there. Okay, now as you see the voltage is again climbing up on the capacitor bank. Okay, so the next thing I'll do now is pull off that magnet. Alright, so here goes. The magnets removed and if you look very quickly again and now you see current draw now here and you see quickly how much this uh, coil would draw uh, without that magnet in that position so um, wanted to show you that that that's the important factor that it's only happening with the magnet there and if we look at our scope shot here, there's our two forms, and there is our data there. Still the same frequency, still the same duty cycle, 
and if we come back here we've got basically next to no uh, voltage or no uh, charge left on our capacitor bank there. So it is obvious that this effect has to involve the magnet with the magnet away from the coil. The coil has to be a certain amount of uh, millihenries. That's one thing I found out as well. I've made a test with this coil, only half of it, which the uh, inductance again is much less and the frequency had to be much higher. I still was able to do it, but the frequency was basically double. So it would happen, let's say, at 40 kHz instead of uh, 20 kHz range uh, with the coils uh, in dual uh, configuration, bringing the inductance uh, more than double. So it, to me, it seems that um, the inductance uh, the higher it is, the lower frequency you could get this effect. And again as well, the further away the magnet is, I've been observing that by just adding little sheets of paper. Every time I added a little sheet of paper to put, pull the magnet away, uh, I was able to drop the frequency as well. So there's a point where there's an ideal point where how far away the magnet is and that kind of thing and the frequency. So to get lower frequency, uh, the inductance would most likely have to double. And uh, I'll be winding another uh, toroid with hopefully a exactly same configuration, but with probably like 10 layers, trying to double or triple the inductance and uh, see what uh, kind of results uh, we would get with that. So what I'm trying to do is do micro uh, changes here. Now, a lot of people have been saying that, you know, we got to isolate the 555 timer uh, from the MOSFET, and I agree, and uh, I'm all for it, but uh, electronics is not my uh, cup of tea or my strong forte. Um, I've tried opto-isolators before, and I don't know if they will work, in fact, at this higher frequency. Uh, we need it to work at the 20 kHz range. So, uh, if you know of a way of doing it, uh, you can share your information there um, and then the other thing is is yes we can isolate uh, the uh, 555 with the opto uh, isolator but again the opto isolator will need another source voltage to again trigger that uh, MOSFET so how do you again isolate that voltage to trigger the MOSFET I don't know to me it sounds like you know, yeah, you can isolate that, but then you also have a problem. Now you're introducing a new source voltage to trigger that MOSFET. So, uh, seems to, I don't know if that changes much. Anyways, that's uh, all I have uh, for today, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye now.